Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Centercom video, I assume that you would be interested in yet more news and opinions regarding the PlayStation 4's architecture from developers. And indeed, we have just that. This time from the developers behind Awesome Noughts, which of course has been pretty damn successful on PC. The developer, also known as Ronam Ronamo Games, if I can speak, that would be fantastic. The co-founder, Jasper Conning, that would be K-O-N-I-N-G, has been discussing the game specifically about the PS4 and the architecture as well. And they started out the gate by asking, the PS4 boasts an exotic architecture along with unified CPU and GPU. How did that affect the development of Awesome Noughts on the PS4? Jasper responded, very little. As an indie developer, we don't push the hardware so hard that we need any of the architecture-specific optimization. Nowadays, the underlying architecture only becomes relevant when you want to push it very hard. Out of quote, this has been something that I've been saying for a while, and I've touched upon it in numerous videos. The bottom line is, from the point of view of developers, it doesn't really matter about a lot of the functions. Like, Awesome Noughts, you know, looks cool and everything, don't get me wrong, you know, it's not an ugly looking game, but it's also very stylized and is not going to push it as much as, say, the new infamous title, Killzone or Battlefield 4 or something from a high-end developer. In other words, they don't need to concern themselves by worrying so much right now anyway about compute. Now that's not exactly true, however, to say that no indie developer will really want to use these functions. For example, I've already covered a Resogon interview, and the developer there said that they were only utilizing about 50% of the CPU inside the PlayStation 4. Instead, they were pushing a lot of the stuff, a lot of the particle effects on to the GPU and using the compute functionalities to do that. So obviously, it does depend upon the game and the engine and the technologies the, and, of course, the vision that they're trying to achieve. But for any architecture that's pretty damn powerful now, and this goes, of course, for PC, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, indie titles are nothing. I mean... For example, if one was to take a look at the recommended requirements for Awesome Noughts on the PC, it requires any processor with a dual core, so in other words, any dual core processor, and only 2 gigabytes of memory. And as for the video card, you only need 512 megabytes. In other words, any system, even one from like 2006 or probably older even, could run this pretty damn easily. And so obviously transferring it to console equals not particularly tricky. So obviously they're not really utilizing a lot of the features. But uh, moving on, they asked specifically about 1080p in 60 frames per second, something that fans have been demanding for the next generation games. Um, do you think more and more games will run at 1080p and 60 frames per second on the PS4? And Jasper responded, of course Awesome Noughts will. We can't speak for other titles though. I mean, it was already possible in the last generation, but most developers opted to go adding lots more detail, going from 1080p to 60 frames per second to 720p to 30 frames per second can free up an incredible amount of resources depending on how your game is set up. So it still might be a viable option. Out of quote, what does this mean, in case you're not exactly, you know, sure? This is to do with the amount of work, quite simply, the GPU is doing. Now, I'm going to be tackling the part two of this, because I've already done part one, regarding how people's opinions are formulated on the 1080p 60 frames per second. The bottom line is, and you might not like the response, the PS4's GPU is not as high-end as a high-end PC. It's just that simple. Now, they can squeeze a lot more out of it, but still, the platform is fixed. In other words, you can't just run down to, you know, your local store and put in a better GPU. So, the problem is, quite simply, developers are going to have this choice, and 720p to 1080p is a crap ton of extra pixels. In fact, it's roughly double. By the way, you can find all this stuff out yourself. Just, for example, type in 1280 by 720 and then look at the number. And then you can type in uh, 1920 by 1080 and then, of course, look at the number. And then you could do that for any other resolution. For example, 1600 by 900 for 900p and so on and so forth. Um, I've said that before. That's why I've kind of run over it. But regardless, 
Um, and of course, 30 frames per second versus 60. Well, come on now, it doesn't really take a genius to figure out the differences there. So that's, of course, why some developers particularly those who are pushing for higher resolution effects and so on, especially right now, where they're still getting used to the hardware. It's not really surprising, but of course we're stuck on this, well, we're not really sure what resolution we're going to be going in with the internal resolution. Of course, what's output in and what's internal are two different things. It's like, and this is a very crappy analogy, but one that serves to give a basic premise. Let's say you were to take a photo, 640 by 480 just for example, and you were to transfer that to your PC and let's say you know you were to say to yourself you know what I want to make this bigger and you were to blow it up three times it's not really that you're improving the quality of the pixels is it I mean this is like one of the first things when I was like very first looking at image editing way back when I was like oh oh, oh cool you know I can take this tiny ass little image from the internet you know I was really young of course I could take this tiny, tiny ass little image and turn it into a wallpaper and you know you'd blow it up you'd blow up like a 320 by 240 image back when you know 15 inch screens were like the big things so you'd have like a resolution of like 1024 by 768 and you'd blow it up and you'd be like well that looks crap and of course internally consoles do a lot better job than this with their internal upscalers however of course the internal rendered resolution is not the same necessarily as what is being outputted on screen but anyway i'm pretty sure most people know that but good to just cover it so anyway, one of the big things that developers have spoken about, for example, Warframe developer the Digital Extremes talk, spoke about how quickly um, they managed to get Warframe running on the PlayStation 4. It took about three months. Regarding other titles, there was, of, talks, of course, talk about how fast Call of Duty got running. Um, a lot of developers, because of numerous things, including the architecture and the fact that they've got very good software libraries and so on, Jasper responded, however, their title only took a couple of weeks to get running. Um, however, solidly tying them into the PlayStation's so, uh, services on the back end will take a lot longer, though, is what he is saying regarding that. Finally, of course, the question of the memory has been asked, and there were literally a ton of things going on when Awesome Lots is being displayed. How does that extra memory matter in developing the game? That's what the interviewer asked. Jasper responded, it mostly means we no longer have to cut corners when it comes to texturing. For the PS3 and the Xbox 360 versions, we had a fairly light texture budget that the art team had to work around. I'm going to quickly translate that. All that simply means is, for the simple case of the Esco with the Xbox 360 or PS3 versions, the artists had to reduce the resolutions of the textures that had to be very... Let's use the word frugal with them. Therefore, because obviously you've, you've only got a certain budget, you've only got a certain amount of memory that you could fit textures in, and all textures are effectively are images, which are then mapped around whatever object that you're trying to texture. I'm really going to have to show you guys how all this works at some point in the not too distant future. Um, but simply put, there are only a certain amount of, well, only a certain amount of memory that you have, and of course, when it comes to either the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4, You've got a hell of a lot bigger budget for textures. You could have, you know, whatever. Of course, it's very similar to PC in that respect. You know, you can have, like, for example, a four gigabyte graphics card. Uh, and that basically means that you can have, like, four gigabytes of texture assets locally. Well, not just texture assets, of course. That's, that's just rubbish because, obviously, you've got models and various other aspects which make up the scene. Now, one of the reasons the PlayStation 4, however, is getting a lot of uh, kudos, if you will, from the development community in regards to console development is because it doesn't need to worry about the ES RAM of the Xbox One. Now, it's still very early days regarding the Xbox One. I don't really want to turn this into a whole thing. But from what I'm reading, it appears that the Xbox One um, does a lot of the texturing from DDR3 which of course is significantly slower than GDDR5, although it's still very early days on just how well that's going to work. Um, in regards to the PlayStation 4, of course, you don't really have to worry about how the memory is divided up. In other words, the memory is however... however to, I know I keep saying the word however, that's because I'm tired, sorry. Um, one thing to is note, however, 
God damn it. It's because, of course, the 8 gigabytes of RAM is not necessarily 8 gigs. Of course, a certain amount has been allocated towards the system, which is, of course, to be expected. So not particularly anything amazing in this interview that has been discussed. I will say, however, it's nice to see the development teams have pushed and haven't drooled over the APU architecture. Now, I think that the APU architecture in certain ways is going to be very beneficial, but obviously not everyone is going to need that. Um, and this is just a demonstration that, look, there is a massive gulf in technical requirements. And if you're not really sure on exactly what I mean by that, you should go to something like steampowered.com. And obviously, they have a list of all the games. You can see the recommended specs. So look at something like Terraria. Look at something like Awesome Noughts. Look at the listed specifications. And then compare that to something like the new Batman um, Arkham Origins or, you know, one of the new really high-resolution titles like Watch Dogs or whatever, and you can see the massive difference and disparity in, of course, resolutions, and that's going to give, and of course, system requirements, so that's going to give you a fair indication of what the developers are speaking about here. Anyway, apologies for kind of stumbling over my words. I'm, well, yeah, just back from the gym and so on, so I'm a bit, you know, out of it. But regardless, I shall soldier forth and all. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video anyway, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.